Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. You know, there is not a lot that American presidents can do to control gas prices, even though their political fate often depends on whether they're going up or down. They do have the one trick up their sleeve. There's an enormous stockpile of actual barrels of oil along the coastlines of Louisiana and Texas, where there are hundreds of millions of barrels stored underground. It's known as the Strategic Petroleum Reserves. I think a lot of people have heard that, think it's some accounting thing. It's not. No, it's literally a reserve of oil that we keep in caves. We started stockpiling barrels of oil after the Arab oil embargo in the early 70s, a kind of emergency source to protect the U.S. from having to deal with a sudden supply crunch, which is basically what we're dealing with now. Earlier this month, the Saudi-run oil cartel known as OPEC announced that it would slash production by 2 million barrels a day. The gas prices are already pretty high, but that would result in further skyrocketing of prices like the ones we saw right after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And with 20 days before the midterm election, that, of course, can make a huge difference on the outcome. The fate of American democracy hangs largely on these little digits you see at gas stations across the country. As wild as it is to say that, it's basically true. And so today, President Joe Biden decided to pull a lever. He announced he will release 15 million barrels of oil from the strategic reserves to bring down gas prices. Gas prices have fallen every day in the last week. Let me repeat, gas prices have come down and they continue to come down again. They're now down more than 27 cents a gallon in Wisconsin this past week, 27 cents in Oregon, 16 cents in Ohio, 25 cents in Nevada, 17 cents in, in, uh, in, in Indiana, in <clears throat> just the last 10 days. And that's progress. But they're not falling fast enough. When the price of gas goes up, other expenses get cut. That's why I have been doing everything in my power to reduce gas prices. And yes, this is a pretty transparently political move on behalf of the president. That is because gas prices are and have historically been a driving factor in U.S. politics. Senator Kennedy has said that the state of the economy will be a main factor in his decision on whether to challenge President Carter. Democratic officials say that today's inflation figures may play into Senator Kennedy's hand. Those figures include gasoline up 3.7 cents a gallon on average last month, up 28.2 cents a gallon so far this year. Politicians smelled not fumes, but opportunity. Republicans called for repeal of the 4.3 cents a gallon federal tax the Democratic Congress imposed in 1993. We need to find some way to help uh, the driving public. For Democrats, a coordinated attack on high gas prices and the president's response. Highest prices that we've had in this country on average ever. And where's the president? It is now time to can Bush. July 2001, buck 33. It's more than doubled in the five years that President Bush and Dick Cheney have been in government. Republicans, for their part, are pretty mad about Biden's move because, of course, they don't want lower gas prices. They want to be able to attack Democrats on the price of the pump. And again, there's good reason for that. There is really robust evidence that the price of gas is one of the, if not the most, important factors in a president's approval rating. One study from 2016 looked at data from 1976 through mid-2007, found, quote, a 10-cent increase in gas prices led to a 0.60% drop in approval for the incumbent president. So, in other words... If gas prices go up by 50 cents, a president loses three points in approval. If gas prices go up a dollar, that's six points. That's enormous in our polarized electorate. Particularly, elections are lost by six approval points. That's the difference between, you know, 10 seats and 30, a bunch of Senate seats. So there's a bunch of tangible evidence now that this is a major issue for President Biden. We've got analyses from the New York Times, the Washington Post, left-leaning pollster data for progress, all finding a correlation between Biden's approval rating and gas prices. And while presidents of both parties have struggled with this problem, right, you're held responsible for this thing you can't control, it is much harder for Democrats to tackle it than Republicans. Because, well, for starters, the big oil companies love Republicans. According to the organization Open Secrets, which tracks money in politics, quote, since the 1990 election cycle, more than two thirds of the energy sector's contribution to candidates and party committees has gone to Republicans. And that makes sense. Republicans are squarely the party of fossil fuels, of oil companies and of drill baby drill. They're also the party of 
burning the planet to a crisp, along with all the coal, gas, and oil underneath the ground. They don't care about climate. They deny it. They hand wave it away. It's also why Donald Trump's Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, was perfectly fine traveling to Saudi Arabia to glad hand and smile and joke with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, two weeks after MBS ordered the murder of American newspaper columnist Jamal Khashoggi and his goons hacked up his body with a bone saw. It was good, uneventful. It was good. I hope we don't have jet lag. <laughs> uh, in a little while, but that's so far so good. Just sitting here with a guy that just ordered a bloody murder because we've got to keep the oil flowing. The Saudis have a lot of control over gas prices, the biggest oil producing nation. And for Republicans, that's really all that matters. Um, that means OPEC and the big oil companies, well, they're inclined towards the Republican Party over the Democratic Party. Remember, the Democratic Party is the party that wants to fight climate change, which means the ultimate abolition, ultimately, of fossil fuel burning. So this is not a tough case, right? Oil companies, OPEC, Saudis, not exactly eager to make sure prices are low before an election where Democratic candidates are vulnerable. It's also why Saudi Arabia might want to suddenly announce a cut in oil production right before the midterms. Of course, Democrats can't just throw their hands up and say, oh, well, because the future of American democracy is in, as we report night in and night out on this program, real peril, existential peril. One of the two major parties is currently under the thrall of a guy who tried a violent coup unsuccessfully, but has basically announced he'd do it all over again. By one analysis, 60% of Americans will have an election denier on their ballot this November. The stakes in the upcoming elections are the highest they've been in a very long time. This is the first po post-coup election in America. We cannot expect threats to democracy to be the only salient issue for voters, even if it is salient for a lot. I mean, you know, there's millions of voters and people have complicated and busy lives and they've got things they're thinking about when they go to the polls, like the cost of living, inflation, and yes, gas prices, the one price in America that is posted on every street corner, those digits, they are gonna be front of mind for voters. And so we find ourselves in a situation where keeping gas prices low is key to preserving and strengthening the future of our democracy, and so, here we are, hence Biden releasing oil from the reserves today. And all this speaks to what the future of our elections will look like, because it's, you can't just count on one thing to preserve American democracy. You can't just count on the voters to vote for it, and you can't just count on the courts, and you can't just count on civil society. It's going to require a broad coalition of factors, people being smart and tactically astute, all working together across the spectrum of civil society to preserve the American experiment.